Hi, I want to show you how to collect gas to find the molar mass of that particular gas. Um, we use water, and water is a great trap um, where we can isolate gas so it doesn't go into the atmosphere, and what cuts it off is a container and water. Um, so in this particular lab, we're going to be taking just a butane lighter, a cigarette lighter. By the way, it's highly entertaining. Go and buy like 26 of these at a grocery store and use a school credit card to pay for it. You should see the looks that you get. And I don't tell people anything like, yeah, I'm teaching the kids how to smoke. No. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to use this butane lighter and I want to know what's the molar mass of the butane inside of this. Now, a driving principle, molar mass is going to be the units. Molar mass is grams per mole. So I've got to find two pieces of information to find the molar mass of the gas inside this lighter, the butane. I need to know the mass of the gas and I need to know how many moles are there for that particular gas. We're going to do this two ways. Number one, to find the mass, I'm going to take the mass initially of this um, butane lighter. I'll release the gas into this container under the water. Then I dry it and then I weigh it again. That difference was the mass of the gas that I put into the graduated cylinder, okay? So that's step one. Now, big principle step two, I need to find moles. Well, for this, we use the ideal gas law, the ideal gas law. Um, and let me talk through this with you because there are several components to it. Um, our unknown is going to be N, the moles of this gas. R, we always have 0 0.0821 ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So we have to get three pieces of information well, the temperature, that's going to be really easy. It will be the temperature of the room. You're going to see that I have this inverted. I'll collect the gas. Now the gas inside of this container will be in thermal equilibrium with the temperature of the room. So the temperature of the room is the temperature of the gas. Easy, okay? Easy piece of uh, data to collect. The volume. The volume is going to be the amount of gas collected in this graduated cylinder. So I'm going to have it upside down and it's really, really important. The level of water inside the graduated cylinder has to equal the level of the water in the container. So I have those levels of water equal. That gives me the volume of the gas inside the container. So there's my V. Now pressure, okay. So as long as when I have this graduated cylinder in here and I've got the water line of the cylinder equal to the water line of the container, the pressure inside the cylinder is equal to the atmospheric pressure. But here's the truth. I don't have just pure butane gas in here. It's actually a mixture. It's a mixture of gas and water, the H2O, because there will be just a, what? It almost looks like um, an inch, about an inch of water will be interacting with that gas. So this is going to be the hardest that this gets, and it's actually not even that hard. Right here to find the pressure, we're going to have to use Dalton's pressure um, partial law. Now, if you have questions on this or how to figure out, there's a table that you can look up, lots of tables on um, the partial pressure of water at different temperatures, watch this video. Okay, watch the partial pressure um, video and it's under the gases playlist. So here it is. The total atmospheric pressure, that's going to be the pressure inside the cylinder, equals the combination of two gases, the water and the gas. Okay, so this water right here, um, what we do is we take the temperature of the water. And that's going to be the temperature you look on the table. Say this is 25 degrees C, so I look at a table uh, for partial pressure of water. Um, it will be 25 degrees, and then I'll say something really small like 33, AT, um, or 33 millimeters of mercury. Uh, so you just look that up on a table, but the temperature that you use is the temperature of the water, okay? The temperature of the water. Um, and then you've got the atmospheric pressure, okay? So I put that this is coming from atmospheric pressure. Then you just have to solve for the pressure of the gas. Do you know what? Let's put an arrow here. So to get the partial pressure, you have to have that atmospheric pressure, and you can just look that up. It, you can uh, Google it. What's the atmospheric pressure for the city you live in? Sometimes teachers, professors, will actually have um, a probe in their room to tell you what the pressure is in the room. Um, and to do that, 
Once you have the atmospheric pressure, it's going to equal two things, the water. And remember, you get this from a table. This, you can just Google. What's the atmospheric pressure at this moment in this city? Or if there's maybe a probe in your room. And then this is your unknown. That's what we're looking for. That's your P sub G that goes right there. Okay? So this is what you solve for. You'll subtract the partial pressure of the water from the total atmospheric pressure. That gives you the partial pressure of the gas, which will give you the moles of your gas, which is going to be butane. Um, okay, so how we do this. Let me show you kind of the logistics of it. Um, the collecting data itself is going to be really easy for you. The hardest part is actually getting all the air bubbles out of this. So notice I put the graduated cylinder in here and I want it to completely fill it with water. So, oh my goodness, that was amazing. It was because I was talking and didn't care about what I was doing. It totally worked. Um, you turn it upside down and you usually get a couple of little air bubbles up at the top. So, and I didn't, I didn't get uh, zero air bubbles this time. Woo, whatever I did, watch it, replicate it, perfect. <laughs> it can usually take a couple minutes to get all those air bubbles out. To get the air bubbles out, what you have to do is tilt this and then you bring the um, opening of the graduated cylinder up so it's elevated and you just let the bubbles, they go totally slow couch. They go pop, 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 pop. Finally, they go bloop and they come out the top. So again, when you go like this, you should see no air bubbles. This is 100% filled with water. Now I'm going to release the butane gas into this. Now I've already weighed it. I've already weighed this to see what the mass of the container and the gas is. So I'm going to put this under the water and I put the opening of the butane lighter um, inside the graduated cylinder and then I open it up so that the gas is going to get caught inside of the graduated cylinder. So we're going to tilt this underneath, we're going to go underneath here and we're going to, and I don't know if you can see, you might have to zoom in. I've opened this up and I can see bubble, 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 bubble. All the gas from the butane lighter is going into my uh, graduated cylinder. And so you just sit and you hold this until you get like 80 mils of, um, of this butane gas. Okay, now I'm not going to waste your time you watching this. I just want you to see how, how I do this. So let's pretend I've got like 80 mils in here, okay? Um, so you can see, most likely, I only filled gas to about 20 mils. Um, it would take me another minute or two to get all the gas out of this. Um, so I fill this with gas, and then again, here's the really important part. You need to um, adjust this graduated cylinder up and down, up and down, so that the uh, level of the water in the graduated cylinder, pretend it's down here, the level of the water of the graduated cylinder has to be flush with the level of the water in the container. When you do that, you have just discovered that the volume, um, the volume of the gas and the pressure of the atmosphere is going to equal the pressure inside that graduated cylinder. So again, get the level inside the cylinder level with the water. You look at that and you record your volume. There's your V, okay? Um, let me review this again. Temperature, T right there is just temperature of the room. I released that gas. That gas is in thermal equilibrium with the temperature of the room. That's the temperature of the gas right there. Um, I have to take the temperature of the water and that is going to give me that little bit of water inside. So, and again, pretend it's down here, but the little bit of water that's interacting with the butane gas, um, the temperature of the water, that tells me how much of that water is going to evaporate, the vapor pressure of that, that water. It gives me the partial pressure of the water when you look it up on a table. Again, look up like 25 degrees C, that's the water temperature of the water, um, and it will give you the, the vapor pressure of that water. Let's see if there's anything else I want to tell you. Yes. Okay, so at this point, we have collected, we know atmospheric pressure, just Google that. Um, I know the temperature of this water, so I look up on the table, get the partial pressure of water, subtract that, just got the partial pressure of the gas. I line up the volume inside the cylinder with the volume outside, or read that, wow, we have the volume of the gas. I've got R, T, temperature of the room. Um, I can solve for N, nice, we get moles. Um, so two last things. Okay, first thing, what I want you to do is hold this up 
let the water out, and then I want you to wake this, okay? Because you're going to have 80 mils of butane gas, and we just want that to disperse into the room. We don't want any concentrated gas, okay? So that kinetic molecular theory, those gas molecules, maniacs, they're going to fill this room, okay? Fill the space. Um, you don't want to keep that all concentrated in, in one place so that it could ignite. Um, believe me, that's bad. Um, so don't do that, just wave it around. Okay, finishing up, one last piece of evidence um, of data. So I put this under the water, opened it up, I released the gas. I now have to weigh this, but there is an issue. And this is, um, I think, where students make their biggest mistakes. There's going to be an error, it's usually right here. You have to dry this. And so I would get a hair dryer, kid you not get a blow dryer and you dry it, dry it, dry it. I would let it sit for two minutes and then I would dry it, dry it. And inside you have all these like little holes and notches, dry, 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 and let it sit and let it cool. And then you weigh it. And that final mass is going to be less because you just released like 80 mils of the butane gas. Um, let's see here. So then you subtract that and that's going to give you the mass of the gas. You then have the mass of the gas. You found the moles of the gas, divide that. Um, and butane, um, butane, here, let's do butane really quick. Here's butane. We've got three carbons and hydrogens on each of those carbons. So we've got C3H8, uh, three times 12, 36 plus eight is 44.11 grams per mole. Let's see. So you'll be able to see your percent error, how close you get to 44.11 grams. Um, let's see, did I do that butane right? Mass F U, yes. Oh no, no, I'm so sorry, I did prop. That's so sorry, you guys. I thought that molar mass was low. <laughs> it was low. Um, butane is four carbons, so sorry. Okay, so here's the molar mass. Um, we've got 48 plus 10, it's going to be 58.414, 58 point, that sounds right. Um, I've had students get really, really small percent errors, um, so you'll, you'll, uh, you'll do well on that. Um, be careful drying this, and another little hint, get the water as cold as possible, and you tend to get better data there too. Okay, so there you have it, how you find the molar mass of a gas, kind of cool. Enjoy this lab, pretty easy collecting the data. Um, once you understand this, it'll be super straightforward. Have a good day. If you need help with any other gases, go to the gases playlist on Lane Think. Thank you, bye.